YouTube friends, Breakman79 here, and welcome back to Let's Play Planscape Torment. So, we're still stuck in this Modron kind of hell. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see if we can figure out how the hell to get out of here. So we've... Unless I'm missing someplace, these places you can't even open. Nothing there. Okay, that's not a door. In the last episode we killed everything, so nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing. Do I have a map? No. I'm gone. Now, did we come in here? Okay. Yeah, we definitely came in here. Alright, what about in here? Also, we came in here. Hmm. in here. Well, huh, I think we've exhausted our options here. All right. So, must have something to do with the Modrons that are just standing around in here. Did I miss something that I can interact with? Hmm. He seems the most special because he's standing on that center piece. The rest of them are just sort of wandering around, but if I remember correctly, they don't... Well, here we go. How do I get out of here? Huh. The Modron hesitates before answering. Exit unavoid... Un oh, no, not unavoidable. Unavailable. Project halted. The room that was filled with a confused buzzing sound that suddenly stops. What project? What are you talking about? Yes, this is the Rubicon Dungeon Construct project. Ah. Yes. Hmm. The Motron begins to emit a soft humming sound as it answers you. Rubicon. Project goal is to determine di the dynamics both social and asocial, surrounding the environment commonly construed as a dungeon and to attempt to explain the aberrations that tend to occur in such environments. Hmm. Well, how do you intend to do that? Rubicon is capable of, of forming a series of rooms linked in such a fashion as to form what is commonly referred to as a dungeon. Each dungeon can have one of three difficulty settings, easy, normal, or hard. The dungeon is then populated with monsters, traps, and treasure, according to the difficulty level chosen. After creation, the dungeon can be fully explored. The Modron begins to emit a low hum. What is that humming sound? Rubicon is a worthy accomplishment and... It pauses for a moment. I... We are content. Uh, you said something about aberrations. Queries to be answered. What attracts people to dungeons? Why do people often seek to enter them if they are places of such danger? Why are dungeons there in the first place? What are the dynamics of a workable dungeon? We do not understand. It pauses. I do not. Hmm. You started to say I instead of we. The Modron gives you a concerned look, then glances about the room. You are in error. We are Modron. We are the whole. We will not discuss this. <laughs> I know what I heard. You started to say I and... The Modron frowns at you. You hear a hint of anger in its voice as it answers you. No. We are Modron. 
We are part of the whole. We will not discuss this further. An angry buzzing fills the room, then subsides. Hmm. How about some other questions? Oh, it's taking me back to the beginning. Who are you? Oh, you are Mojon. Don't have names. Hmm. What about you, the individual? Yeah, I didn't think... I'm pretty sure I've read this before. Uh, how do we get out of here? Let's try this again. Uh-huh. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Let's keep going down this. Keeps getting ticked off. Okay, I'd like to try out one of these dungeons. There is significant pause before the Mojon answers you. Request denied. Project halted due to accident. What accident? Dungeon cons uh <clears throat> dungeon construct became unstable. Cause uncertain. Fail safe is activated, causing dungeon to collapse. Cause uncertain. Portal lens malfunctioned, causing contact with home plane of Mechanus to be severed. Cause uncertain. Reset of dungeon necessary. Well, then why don't you reset it? Reset can only be initiated by project director. Project director disintegrated. <laughs> Ouch. Portal lens has malfunctioned in contact with Mechanus severed. Cannot acquire a replacement director from Mechanus. Let me get this straight. You can't reset without a director, but you can't get a director without resetting. Hmm, he's got a paradox on our hands here. The Modron looks worried and begins to fidget. Assessment correct. Project halted. Look, I'm an adventurer, and I've been through some dungeons in my day. Why not let me be your director? The room is suddenly filled with the buzzing sound that just as suddenly subsides. Assistance welcome. You are now project director. Advise on next task. Reset the dungeon. Initializing reset. The room is filled with a low thrumming sound that can be felt rather than heard. Collapsing existing dungeon. The sound rises in power until the floor begins to vibrate. Initializing new dungeon. The sound rises in volume until you think your head is about to explode. Suddenly the room grows quiet. Reset complete. Dungeon con construct status easy. Awaiting further instructions, director. Okay. Huh. What exactly is Rubicon capable of? Oh, so this is basically the same thing he said before. Talking about the dungeon, three difficulty settings, da 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 da. After creation, the dungeon can be fully explored. The Modron pauses. Alternative. Oh, no, wait. <laughs> Alternate capabilities are available via the portal lens. And what are they? Rubicon can form a gateway to other locations by temporarily attaching itself to known existing portals. This effect is known as a portal lens. This allows us. No, this allows use of the portal from within Rubicon without traveling to the portal location. So if I know of a portal, I can go to its destination from here. Correct, director. Hmm. I want to use the portal lens to travel somewhere. Interesting. Are there any dangers associated with Rubicon that I should be aware of? Yes, director. Do not become separated from any companions while in the maze. If the maze were to be reset, or a new difficulty setting chosen, anyone left in the maze would be killed. I see. I will not reform my party while in the maze. Anything else? Updated my journal. Hmm. Yes, director. Do not drop items or equipment in the maze. If the maze were to be reset, or a new difficulty setting chosen, any items left in the maze would be destroyed. Okay, I won't drop anything in here. My journal. 
Nothing else. Okay, what other questions? Okay, I want to create a dungeon to explore. Select a difficulty level. Oof. It's set for easy now, change it to hard. Easy. Hmm. Let's just leave it as it is. Interesting. So now all the Mojones are going to talk to me because I'm the director, right? Let's see what this one says. Greetings. Questions? No, this one's not going to say anything different. I, I feel like I'm in a cuckoo clock. A cuckoo cuckoo clock. Huh. <laughs> However, um, now that I'm a director, maybe those Mojones that are back uh, at the uh, sensate, uh, you know, fall from grace's place will um, hmm, be more useful. The heck? It just took me back to the beginning. That's interesting. Greetings. Yeah, that's fine. Huh. All right. All right. Oh yeah. Oh, oh, kill it. Five hundred experience points. I suppose this is like one way you could kind of grind for something. Um. Ignore it. Kill it. Come on, guys. Yeah, but 500 experience, that's not really much. <laughs> Come on, guys. Oh, he dropped some money. Okay, come on, guys. Put him out of his misery. A, cl a clue? This cryptic piece of parchment simply states, you now have a better understanding of what is going on. The hell does that mean? Someone else can take that. Huh. Ooh. Dead end. Oh, three on three. All right, ignore them. Kill the nearest one. So what, I wonder what the, uh, Done. come on, All right. oh wow, I can go anyway here, hmm, oh, three on three again, huh, come on. See, did they drop anything useful? Probably not. Let's keep going south here. Eh, ignore them. Get over here. Ignis is getting a little beat up. Ah, looks like we've dead-ended here. 
Alright, let's go east. Uh huh, ignore, keep on. Hey, hey. Nice. Uh, south, alright. Great, dead end yet again. I don't see anything useful that they've dropped. Okay, let's go back north and east. Okay, get them, guys. I mean, let's see what is. Cube shaped bolts. Hmm. Okay. Oh, money. Hmm. I just hope I don't get lost in here. Uh, north. What are you curious? Oh, jeez, you think. Not everyone at once. Okay. Okay. Can go that way. Take the west corridor. Ah, two of them. Just keep ignoring them. I sell some money. Right. And hmm, I think that's that. I think we explored everything. I think we went down this way. Double check. Yeah. Alright. Back we go. Ah. Let's go north. Where? Coins. <laughs> All right, kill that one. Nope. That's the end of that. All right, I think we've definitely explored everything. Let's just head back. I was expecting maybe something like a boss fight or... Maybe on the higher difficulties. Or maybe on the higher difficulties you get better stuff. I assume there's like some sort of end goal for that. Uh, let's talk to him. Okay. Portal ends. Oh. State your destination. Let's see, it can take me... Smoldering Corpse? No. Uh, no. How about the... The question is, how do I get back? Hmm. 
clerk's ward. All right. And we're back out here. All right. All right, let's see if my theory holds true. Will these Modrons talk to me now? The Modron stares at you. Hmm. It's the what are you doing here? Who are you observing? Yes, but exactly who? Why are you watching her? Oh. Hmm. Huh. Idea how we're supposed to find this. Find the portal key to Ravel's maze. Great, great, great. <sighs> so, this is another one we know we have the answer to it, but I don't know where this guy is anymore. No longer remember where I ran into him. Done. Uh, Done. All right. I suppose we could just go wandering around. Marketplace, pawn shop, coffin maker, coffin maker. I don't recall. Done. I'm pretty sure we've been in here. Oh yeah, yeah. Coffin maker. Strange building appears to be a coffin maker shop. The sign about the door has the slogan "Engineered for Eternity" clearly written upon it. Is there like an entrance to this thing? Indeed, it does have an entrance. All right, some place I've never been. It's even shaped like a coffin. Dim tree. All right. You see a tall, slender man with a glassy-eyed expression. He seems engrossed in some tale that the shopkeeper is relating. Occasionally he nods his head, but makes no comments of his own. Well, hello. The man turns slightly at your green, just enough to acknowledge your presence. You notice that he is a little pale of complexion and rather gaunt looking. He is giving you a blank stare. The shopkeeper does not seem to notice any of this and continues with his stream of useless prattle. Are you alright? The man continues to stare at you and slowly nods. You wait for any further response, but he says nothing, only stares. You are about to turn away in frustration when you think you notice a strange, musty odor about the man. Musty, huh? 
step closer and sniff. You lean in and sniff at the man. Unsure what you'll find, as you do, a musty odor fills your senses, an odor you recognize from the t your time in the mortuary. It is the smell of dead flesh, preserved by magic. You're a zombie, aren't you? The creature continues to stare at you blankly. Slowly, as with, with great effort, he begins to reply to you. Only your speak with dead power makes him understandable. Yes, I am Dimtree. Why are you here, Dimtree? Dimtree slowly glances at the shopkeeper and makes a feeble gesture toward him. Seeing this is a sign of interest, the shopkeeper redoubles his effort in telling whatever tale he is relating to the poor creature. Dimtree looks at you again. Hamrys. He talks. Hamrys never stops. Wanders town. Annoys master. Annoys everyone. Master create Dimtree. Tells Dimtree, talk Hamrys. Now Hamrys stand shop. Master happy. Town happy. Dimtree sad. Is there anything I can do to help you, Dimtree? The creature pauses, then resumes his slow speech with you. You can almost detect a pleading tone in his voice. Yes. Find Master. Sebastian. Ask him release me. Please. He turns his attention to Henry's momentarily. Please. Um, I don't know. I'll think about it. Huh. The creature gives you a barely perceptible shrug of the shoulders. No, nothing. Dim tree summoned by master. No darkness. Peace. Rest. Then Hamry's. Sorry. Help you if could. Hmm. Oh, it looks like there's a couple little things I can look at here. Hey, money. I'll take I'm that. I'm gone. Nah, I don't want it. Tombstone or headboard? Hmm. Coffin currently under construction. Looks like we got another coffin over here. With, yeah, not even going to worry about that. Uh... Tools used in coffin making. Well, let's talk to Hamrys here. You see a rugged looking square jawed man. He turns to you with a wide smile. How are you, Cutter? Good day to you. Good day indeed. He squints at you for a second, then just his hand out to shake yours. Ah, oh, well, hello. Hamrys at your service. Member of the Harmonium and the Fashioner of Fine Coffins for the recently departed. I think I know you, do I not? Let me see if I can place it. He pauses to think for a moment. Sharp with names I was in the Harmonium, let me tell you, knew everyone in the entire ward. I don't get what, why I can always lie to people and tell them that I'm somebody named Adden. Who the hell is Adden? Did I miss something in the beginning of the game? Ugh. Anyway. Ask away, gives you a broad smile. Who's your friend here? He glances at the customer, Dimtree? He shrugs like he hadn't considered the fellow before. Quiet. Doesn't say much, do you, Dimtree? Dimtree doesn't respond, but simply gives the same blank expression. A few seconds later, he nods. Henry shrugs, turns back to you. Wandered in one day a few weeks back. Been a regular ever since. He hasn't bought anything, but he doesn't cause any trouble, so I let him stay. Seems harmless enough. You see, when I was serving the Harmonium, part of our work was to take people under our wing, give them a little shelter from the chaos of the streets, get them spruced up. You do know that he's a zombie, don't you? He frowns, glances at Dimtree, then back at you. What nonsense are you rattling on about? Dimtree's no zombie. Sure, he may be quiet and doesn't move much, but it's just because he's a good listener. <laughs> Punch Dimtree. Look, Dimtree's a zombie. Hermes looks at you in shock. What in the Harmonium's name are you? You cuff Dimtree on the skull hard. He doesn't even blink. Hamtree turns red and starts bellowing. You've gone too far. 
I want to have you striking my customers. I'm placing you under arrest by the authority of the Harmonium. He stops and stares in wonder at Dimtree still fails to react. He's a zombie, Hamrys. Hamry stares at Dimtree in confusion. I wonder how he died. You get the feeling that Hamry's just isn't getting it. Just the other day, he seemed quite lively. He harumps, for once at a loss for words. Well, it looks like old Dimtree will still need a coffin. Good thing he ended up here. Thing is, what kind of coffin should... He looks like he's about to begin a lecture. Ugh, questions. Ah, uh, what can you tell me about this ward? Uh, yes, the lower ward. He leans forward as if explaining something to a small child. You know, it's a little known to most newcomers, and even people in the ward... Most people think that this ward gets its name simply because it's not as prestigious as some of the other wards. But that's not it at all. Not at all. Do you know where the name comes from, hmm? He looks at you expectantly. Ah, uh, from all the lower plane portals? He nods, though he seems a little disappointed that you know. Yes, indeed. These portals to the lower planes are actually the reason for the smog in the skies here. He glances upwards, as if imagining the sky above your heads. But I'm sure you are already aware of the conditions that plague the ward. <laughs> I don't think he's going to tell me anything new, but well, why not? City of Sigil. Uh, oh, I can ask him about portals. Sigil, he lets it all in. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah, Lady of Pain. Lady, does he know any portals? Portals? Do I know any portals? He pauses. Well, none personally, except some of the more common ones. I imagine they can be found in practically every ward. Portals are funny things. Sometimes they shift around. At other times, they simply seem to vanish. They are hard to keep track of. He shrugs. Hmm. Well, we can go talk to Sebastian. I seem to remember where he was. Done. Do, 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 do. Let's see. He was up around here somewhere. There he is. Ah, Sebastian smiles at you. Good day, Cutter. How may I help you? What? Hmm. Hmm. Well, that wasn't much of a uh, anything. What happens if I just put the zombie out of his misery? Okay, let's make this quick. Yeah, I'll help you. Oh, now well, here we go. Ah, you can almost sense a sense of relief emanating from the zombie. Dimtree, thank you, friend. I know exactly where he is. Come on, guys. I'm gone. Ugh. <laughs> Not everyone at once, come on. There we go. Hmm, I wonder if we're going to have to do another little job for him. Actually, I want to talk to you about Dimtree. He stares at you for a moment and then sighs. What about Dimtree, Cutter? <laughs> he wants to be released from his curse. He gives you a surprised look and then waves you off. I find that hard to believe, Cutter. Dimtree doesn't have the mental power to desire anything. He frowns for a moment. Did that idiot Humphreys put you up to this? <laughs> Think about it, Sebastian. Hamreys doesn't know Dimtree is a zombie, let alone who created him, right? He sighs and seems to be deep in thought. Yes, you're right, of course. Hamreys could not have sent you. I guess poor Dimtree is more aware than I intended. A pox on me for my stupidity. So, will you release him? He looks at you for a moment with conflicting emotion crossing his face. He sighs and throws his arms up in exasperation. I cannot, sorry. 
He gives you a pleading look. I want to, mind you, but I cannot. I fulfill the contract by creating Dimtree, and I cannot break it. Right or wrong, I am a man of my word. My reputation demands it. Huh. I'm guessing my way of releasing him would just be to, you know, knife in the back of the head kind of thing. Uh, who contracted you? Maybe I can get them to agree to his release. He smiles at you. I am magically bound not to reveal such information, Cutter. That is why people come to me. They know that if I accept the contract, it will be handled with discretion. Well, I don't see any other way around this. Um, I understand. That's the way business should be conducted. Could I release him instead? That would be difficult. He turns and begins to look through a nearby box. After a moment, he removes a book which he sets down in front of you. First, you'd have to have some magical aptitude. Second, you'd have to be able to properly speak the words you find on page 23 of this book. Go on. Last, you'd have to touch Dim Tree just as you feel the power of the words culminate within you. He turns his back on you and rummages through another box. I couldn't allow you to read that book, however. It'd be tantamount to my breaking my word through the actions of another. He continues poking through the box, ignoring you. Okay, read the book and leave. Updated my journal. Sweet! I'm gone. Where is everybody? Alright, there you guys are. Did we ever figure out what to do with this guy? Back again? Yeah, I had some questions. Be quick. What is this place? Ah, uh, where in particular? Tell me about the open air market. Ah, uh, nothing exotic. Count and sons on. Okay. I guess this is all I can do. Hmm. Well, he's not very useful. Did I. Did it give me like a spell or anything? I don't. Mm-hmm. Of course, missiles. It doesn't look like it. All right, let's just talk to him. Dimtree turns to face you slightly as you approach. You can feel a sense of expectation in the air about him. You, find Master. Dimtree, release. Yes, Dimtree, I know how to release you now. Dimtree turns to face you and gestures toward you. Please, friend, speak the word Sebastian taught you. You pause to gather your thoughts and then carefully speak the word Sebastian taught you. You then reach out and touch Dimtree lightly on the forehead. Rest well, Dimtree. Updated my journal. Hmm, 4,000 more experience. With a sigh, the zombie collapses at your feet. You think you hear a fleeting, thank you, friend, as he falls to the ground. Leave. Ooh, okay. <laughs> I wonder what Hummers is going to say about the guy just keeling over dead in front of him. <laughs> Doesn't even care. Nope. He dropped something, though. A clot charm. All right. I can give that to somebody. That's interesting. Did Ignis heal himself? Come on. I'm gone. Everybody in, then everybody out. All right. I'm gone. So what else we got on this level? Print shop? No. The warehouse? The, uh, yes, the foundry. Wrecked house. Pawn shop. I do need the succubus for I shall turn on as you will. <laughs> Alright. The warehouse? Alright. I... 
I really wish the uh, journal told me where I met people. Uh, call. Floating skull. Morty and him should be best friends. Uh, da, da, da. Claim something. Nope. Hmm. Head at the door. Okay, obviously not here. Done. Darren. Trist. Hmm. You see a young woman who's trying to get your attention. She is wearing shoddy clothes, but her demeanor is one of elegance. Unlike that of the people who surround her. Upon closer inspection, you notice that her skin is clean and smooth, lacking the yellow tint of the inhabitants of this ward. She notices your, your approach and smiles at you. Hello. I think the power is that you noticed me. I am in need of the services of a mercenary. She paused and examined you more carefully. If appearances are any indi the indication, you would seem to be such an individual. Appearances can be deceptive. A look of concern crosses her face. Yes, Cutter, forgive me. I did not mean to offend you. I am in a situation of, well, desperation. I have exhausted all resources available to me in order to remedy my situation. What exactly is that you want of me? She nods to you. The heart of the matter is that I am to be sold into slavery for a crime I did not commit. I am in need of a champion. Someone who will help me prove my innocence and free me from this fate. She pauses and looks at you expectantly. Well, tell me what's going on. She thinks for a moment. This is long in the telling, Cutter. Please bear with me. Go on. She sighs as she begins her tale. My husband died recently and left me his business. I am not the business oriented, so I decided to sell. Not long afterward, I was contacted by a lender saying loan on the business had not been paid. She pauses to gather her thoughts. I examined all the documents my husband kept and found that there had been, had indeed been a loan taken, but it had just recently been paid in full. I explained this to the lender and, a few days later, he asked for a copy of the document. It was nowhere to be found. She looks concerned and pauses to think. Well, when I could not prove that the loan had been paid, the lender took me before the court. My monies were taken and applied to the balance owed. Since it did not pay off the loan, I am to be sold on the block to try and recover the remaining amount due. She gives you a forlorn look. I don't understand why I sell you into slavery. She shrugs. It serves many purposes. First, it keeps the prisons relatively clear of all but the vilest criminals. Second, the sale of the convicted is used to pay for any damages, costs, or fees involved in the case. Finally, the convicted still serves a sentence from which they are eventually released, supposedly as better citizens. Well, this is all fascinating, but I don't see how I can help you. I, I need someone to find the missing document. The one that proves the loan was paid. Or if you could purchase my contract, I could pay you back. She gives you a pleading look. I can't spend the next five years of my life in this ward, Cutter. It will kill me. Surely you've noticed the illness shared by all who live here. Yes, the yellow skin and coughing. She nods her head. Yes, Cutter, please. Can you find it in your heart to help me? She looks at you nervously, please. Hmm. Yes, I'll help you. I have some questions, though. Updated my journal. Ask anything, Cutter. What's the lender's name? I know his name well, Cutter. After all I have been through, I will not likely forget it. 
She gets a faraway look and then suddenly shudders for a moment. Byron Pickett is his name. Hmm, we would just try to talk to him a moment ago. She pauses for a moment, and his associate may be someone named Lenny. Ah, oh, Lenny. The guy who just keeps telling me to frack off. Who is this Lenny? She thinks for a moment. There was a small, feral-looking man who came to court a few times. He would sit behind Pickett and whisper to him occasionally. She pauses and looks lost in thought. Go on. She frowns. <clears throat> I remember him because he always seemed to be uncomfortable in his clothes. He would pick at them as if they were new, as if he were not used to wearing them. She pauses again. On one such occasion, Pickett told him to sit still and stop fidgeting. He called him Lenny. Where can I find him? Oh, why did I even ask that? I'm not sure, actually. My husband told me that some ruffians could be found southeast of the market, near the siege tower, I believe. I know where Byron is, but I'll ask anyway. Open air market. Yep. Okay. Who do I talk to about your contract? That would be Darren, the auctioneer. He's usually over there on the block. She points to the front of the platform. Could you have misplaced the loan document? She shakes her head. No, Cutter. I am a very meticulous person. I kept the document in a lockbox in my husband's study and never left that room. Do you think the loan documents could have been stolen? She shrugs. I don't know. Why would anyone steal that, yet leave other valuables be? It makes little sense to me. Well, maybe the lender stole the documents so that you'd pay for the loan twice. She looks at you in shock. That, that is a terrible thought. She hesitates and then begins to tap her chin with a finger as she thinks. But also a most ingenious one, Cutter. This Byron Pickett does strike me as a knight of the post. A what? She gives you a quizzical look. A thief or a cheat, Cutter. Such are called knights of the post, or of the cross trade. Have you explained any of this to these courts you spoke of? She nods her head. Oh yes, Cutter, I've explained my situation to many. You were the first to be willing to help me. She smiles warmly at you. Okay. Let's go talk to our friend up here. See if he has anything different to say this time. Come on. Oh my. There we go. Ah. I want to talk to you about Trist. Ah, Trist. He frowns and looks away. After a moment, he looks at you and raises his eyebrows. What about her? I'm trying to find a missing document for her. He sighs and shakes his head. There is no missing document. That was a ruse instigated by Trist to cast doubt on her debt. This matter has been thoroughly investigated by the Mercy Killers, and they found no evidence of any such document. Mercy Killers? Yes, a faction of fanatics dedicated to uncovering the truth in criminal cases and handing out justice. They are often used as investigators by the courts of sigil. They are quite thorough, and they have found nothing. He glares at you. Well, they could have missed something. That is a possibility, but not very likely. You obviously are not familiar with the Mercy Killers or their methods for you to make such a statement. If they could not find the document, then it does not exist. He looks at you angrily. Someone could have stolen the document and then destroyed it. That way the loan would be paid twice. Updated my journal. Uh. For a moment he looks as if he is about to be furious with you. Then a gloating smile crosses his face. What a terrible thought. Pity there is no proof of any such activity. He continues to smile at you. Yes, a pity. So tell me, why have Triss sold into slavery? Slavery? Couldn't she pay you your money in the form of a loan? Yes, yeah, she could. 
and I did make that offer to her. He looks at you sternly. However, she turned me down. I don't allow second chances. No one turns me down without suffering the consequences. No one. I have some other questions. No, I have had enough of you to last a lifetime. I will answer no more of your questions. Now, pike it, sod. He turns away from you. Hmm. So, we need to right. deal with this... We need to stay off camp now. No, we need to deal with this dirtbag first. Why don't we go kind of put the squeeze on Lenny down here? Hello, buddy. Ah, can it. You see Lenny. He gives you a mock smile as you approach. Well, hello again, Burke. To what do I owe this pleasure? I have some questions. He laughs at you. I ain't no tout. If you got questions, go find one. His smile broadens. You'd best push off before I have to bleed you. What have I told you Byron Pickett sent me? He stops smiling and examines you for a while. His eyes linger on your scars and he swallows slightly. After a moment, a frown settles on his face and he appears to be nervous. Pickett sent you? Why? He said you could answer some questions. He frowns. What questions? You notice he looks rather tense. Hmm. I want to ask you about the papers you stole from Trist. He swallows hard and stares at you. You notice his muscles tense and it looks like he is ready to run. He puts one hand on his hip in a nonchalant manner, but you can tell he is wound tight as a spring. I don't know what you're talking about, Burke. You'd best be off. Smile wickedly. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, Lenny. Byron had you steal some papers from Trist. I'm here to collect them. He swallows hard and the corner of one eye starts to twitch. He glances at the scars that cover your body then tries to meet your gaze, but cannot. Collect them? I, I destroyed the papers after I nicked them, just like Byron told me to. He finally meets your gaze. <laughs> really? Then why are you so nervous, Lenny? Let me guess. Byron thinks you destroyed the papers, but maybe you didn't. Maybe you kept them. A little blackmail material, perhaps? He stares at you for just a moment, then suddenly turns to run. Grab him. Just as he starts to run, you leap forward to grab him. He deftly steps out of your reach and begins to sidestep you. Seeing your quarry about to escape, you make another, more desperate lunge at him. You fail to grab him, but you do manage to bump into him hard, knocking him off balance. Your efforts foil his escape. All right. I didn't destroy them. I'll give them to you. Just let me go. Hmm. Yeah, which one? Why did you keep them, Lenny? Blackmail, I assume? He snorts and gives you a defiant look. I kept them so I could turn stag on your boss picket and keep Trist off the block. He shakes his head, blackmail my arse. Turn stag? Yes, turn stag. He looks at you for a moment until he realizes you don't know what he means. It means I was going to turn him in, betray him to the harmonium. Why turn stag on him? He looks at you with some pride. I may be a thief. But I do have some standards. I won't kill some poor sod, and I won't do what Pickett did to Tristan, her husband. He shakes his head and looks away. I told your boss what he was doing was wrong, and he laughed at me. Let's see what he says to this. By the way, Pickett is not my boss. He stares at you in disbelief. You serious? I thought... But you said, 
He watches you closely for a moment and then laughs. You gave me the peel so I'd spill the chant to you. He shakes his head and looks at you with respect. Good job, Cutter. Let's go get the papers, Lenny. He shakes his head sadly. We can't. They're in the warehouse and they're not open for business right now. Rumor has it there's some sort of management change going on, but I don't know if that's true. In any case, I can't get the papers. He looks at you sheepishly. Uh, sheepishly. Sheepishly. There we go. That's why I haven't helped Trist myself, Cutter. I can't get the sodding papers. I'll look into this and get the papers myself then. He smiles at you. Go to the warehouse and tell the clerk I'm here for a loan. He'll give you Trist's papers. If you then tell him I gave Pickett the laugh, he'll give you a bonus. What bonus? He laughs. Evidence, Cutter. It'll take pick it off the streets for a long, long time if you give it to the right person. He thinks for a moment. If there's someone in Harmoni you think you can trust, give it to them. Alright then. Updated my journal. Oh, Alright. Warehouse. Alright. Do, do 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 Under new management. Come on. Okay. Why why can't I just walk up to the counter and talk to him? Ah. Dude, I like to claim something. I was told to tell you I gave Pickett the laugh. I couldn't carry any more, so I had to drop oh. it. Oh. <laughs> I certainly hope so, sir, whatever that means. I'm just a big, dumb rockhead. Here are your papers, sir, and here, thank you. What can I do for you? That's it. Farewell, we at the Vault of the Ninth World. Value your business, please return. Yep, I bet. Dang it. Oh my goodness, so many papers. Uh, uh, Marty. Let's see, can I pick it up? Okay, good. Loan document. Alright, so what do we got here? Loan document. Healing scroll. Scroll of evidence. Ooh. This is a scroll listing the criminal activities of Byron Pickett. Nice. Document shows the Trist loan from Byron Pickett was paid in full. Okay. Okay, let's see if we can put another side quest under our belt here. You see Trist. She smiles at your approach and looks hopeful. Have you found the document cutter? Can you free me? Yes. I will give it to Duran and he will free you. A look of relief washes over her face. Do you think she is about you think she is about to faint, but she quickly recovers. I thank you, Cutter. Please return to me after you speak with Duran. Harmonium officer. Okay, Duran. You see Duran, the auctioneer. He smiles at your approach. Well met again. What can I do for you on this glorious smog-ridden day? I want to talk to you about Trist? Frowns for a moment, then shrugs. Very well, sir. What about Trist? I have proof that she is innocent of any crime. He smiles broadly, then laughs. Very well. Show me this evidence. He holds his hand out to you. Give him the document. He opens the document and quickly scans its contents. After a moment, he sighs, then folds the document and puts it inside his shirt. It seems the courts owe Lady Trist an apology, sir. From this moment, she is free, and I will make all the arrangements to have her status and property returned to her. Why, thank you, Duran. Updated my journal. No, thank you. It's a rare individual who will do what you have done. He bows to you. Excuse me, I must speak with Lady Trist. Farewell. Farewell. Okay. Do I talk to her again? Trist smiles at you warmly. You are my savior, Cutter. I will forever be in your debt. 
Oh, I was happy to help you, Trist. Thank you, Cutter. She glances about and pauses to think for a moment. You have saved me from certain death, Cutter. A slow, painful death. She frowns as she thinks. Please wait here. I shall return shortly. She turns and walks away. All right, Trist. You see Trist approaching. She smiles and waves at you. Hello again, Cutter. Thank you for waiting. She looks about for a moment, then removes a purse from the folds of her dress. With the document you have provided, the courts will restore my status and finances. This is not much, but is a well-deserved reward for what you have done. She hands you a purse. Thank you. No, thank you. Farewell, Cutter. Ooh, money. Turn around the auctioneer. Questions? Okay. So, who can we give the um, evidence to? Um, there was like the Harmonium Officer. Where was he? Uh, back door. He was in the marketplace, wasn't he? We kind of became friends with him. I mean, we we set him up with the lady, Corvus. Hello, Corvus. You see Corvus the Harmonian Garb. He smiles at you your approach and gives you a slight bow. Hello, friend. I hope you are doing well. How are you and Karina doing? He smiles broadly. We're doing well, thank you. I owe you for your kindness, friend. He seems like the good person to talk to. I have some questions. Ah. I will help you if I can, citizen. Do you know someone named Byron Pickett? He frowns and nods his head. Yeah, I'm familiar with Byron. I, oh yeah, ah, excellent. He was the right person to talk to. I have evidence that proves he is involved in criminal acts here in Sigil. He looks at you with interest. Oh, may I see this evidence? Let's give him the papers. Updated my journal. He examined the papers thoroughly, then folds them and puts them away. He nods to you and smiles. Excellent work, citizen. These documents are quite detailed in their content. I personally will see to it that Byron Pickett is taken before the courts. He salutes you, then turns to leave. I shall return shortly. All right. As so He soon returns and smiles at you. The deed is done. Pickett has been removed from the streets. The evidence has been presented to the courts, and soon he will stand trial. He gives you a slight bow. Once again, I thank you. Haha, -ha, thank you. I must be going now. Sweet. Alright. And he is gone. Awesome. And with this, guys, I think I'm going to end this episode here. We'll pick it up next time, and... I don't know. Continue with our side quests, I guess. I might do some searching off camera to see if I can find the uh, the guy I keep mentioning that I cannot find. <laughs> Until then, you guys have a good evening, and I'll see you next time. And thanks for watching. Next time, bye bye.